Okay. Okay. What's that song? If she, she a baby mama, mama. go with that baby mama. Getting shot then? Well, I'm in the mirror. Oh. And then I was going to walk into shot. Sorry, baby mama. Yeah, yeah, you're a baby mama. Work. Will you let me do the baby mama dance? I hope that wasn't twerking. <laughs> well, you've got a baby inside of you. Right, okay. Hello, everybody. Long time no catch up on our... Oh! Part. I'm rusty. We've not filmed in a very long time, actually. It's been a hot minute. Right, this is how breathless I get, okay? Even just the excitement of talking to you guys actually gets me out of breath. I've started PT sessions. <sighs> Deep breath, Eleanor. So it is something I'm working on, but if I get breathless because I get so excited to talk to you, forgive me. Guys, we're all caught up. You know our secret. We are P R E G N A N. T with a baby. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and it's our first trimester recap Q and A video. Whoa. That was a lovely noise, by the way. What? That's a woo, wasn't it? It's like a happy noise. <laughs> what? It was a woo. Mm. It wasn't like. Did I not do it? I it, was, it was like my screaming on the roller coasters. It was like. Whoa. Was it? I've asked Connor to be in on today's um, pregnancy QA for a couple of reasons. One of them I've actually not told him. Oh, not another present under the tree. It's twins. <laughs> <laughs> joking. I've asked him to be on today's video so that I don't slip up on A, the gender, and B, Ooh. the name. I think I'm more prone to slipping up on the gender. No, hours. no, you're not, though. I don't know. Darling. I don't know, Els. I nearly did a story the other day. I gave it away. And as I was hitting... What do you mean you nearly did a story? As I was hitting post, I was like, no! I hell would have broke loose. I know. Had I, I know. seen that, I Connor. know. I know. I know. Let's not forget it takes two to tango. Okay, everybody? Mm. I may be the one carrying this child, but guess what? Without me. Connor helped make it, right? And also, Connor has been helping with pregnancy, haven't you, darling? Yeah, I'm a tremendous How pregnancy partner. How have you found partner. the... First trimester, sweetheart. I think we've been quite lucky, to be honest, haven't we? Yeah, we have. AKA, you have been lucky. And you. You haven't, haven't had any more sweetness or anything. Been lucky we've both not, been lucky. To not have to deal with that. Excuse me. <laughs> Angels, I got super protective. I'm like, Herbie now, if I see <laughs> yeah. anyone near my house, what? Get away from my baby. Bah! You made me drown my croissant. <laughs> what? <laughs> You know that meme? No. Yes, you do, Connie. Yes, you do. It's one of your favourite ones, where he where he drop where he comes out. No, I do. I'm going to go on about shaming. Where he comes out? No. Okay, there's two that you like. The one where he comes out from behind the door, and one of them's like, ah. You made me drown my croissant. I'm literally. Connor. Okay, well, do you know what? Maybe I should find someone else when to watch, scares to him, watch TikTok that? with. Is yeah, that, that was the other one I was going to just tell you about. <laughs> You made me drop my, my croissant. croissant. So we've asked you guys to ask us some um, questions because the plan for today's video originally was a first trimester vlog, okay? When I found out I was mm. pregnant, guys, I was like- You're buzzing for this one, yeah? I'm gonna do the best first trimester vlog anybody's ever seen because I really enjoyed watching them in my first trimester mm. when I couldn't talk to you guys about it. Which and I've can I watched add? many now Yeah. off the back of that. So I know exactly what our first trimester is all about. Well, yeah, because you've lived, lived it, it darling. Well. I was finding it ever so hard, guys, not to talk to you about the fact that we were pregnant. I don't know how I made it. Every I, I want to say every evening I was like, I just want to speak to the angels I just, about I was pregnancy. really struggling not telling you guys because you know me, I'm like an open book, okay? When something happens to me, IRL, I'm you like, want it. message, yeah. tell the angels, send. Where's that from? We find it hard keeping... Angel collection. Or just leave me hanging. What did you say? I said, message, tell the angels, send. Where's that from? Oh, circle. <laughs> We've been watching the circle recently and it's uh, a top tier. It's really great. Anyway. What was I saying? <laughs> what <are you> saying? <laughs> we find it difficult keeping clothing drops from you guys yes. a secret. And they're like a few weeks, maybe yeah. a month in advance. So yeah. having to keep this 
a secret for 12 big weeks. new addition to the family that I'm growing inside of me a secret. It's just been hard. Even so to the point that when it actually got to 12 weeks, it felt really weird to me that we were actually announcing it and that it was like going to be public knowledge because yeah. I'd had to fight so hard my, within my mind to keep it a secret. It's like I'd padlocked it a hundred times, jinxed it, the now whole lot. Knows. Now everyone knows. Anyway, so I was going to do this massive first trimester vlog. Guys, I filmed three clips, okay, through the first 12 weeks of my pregnancy. They were long clips though, weren't they? They were about half an hour each. Yeah, because I remember you <laughs> filming it. And I, I, one time I was walking oh, the dogs. Oh, you weren't... No, I was walking the dogs oh, and I had, to do like, I had to do like four loops before I could get back in the car because you just sat there filming. Oh yeah, and that clip didn't, and you didn't make use it. it. You're like, oh, I had to redo it because I was talking too much about ovulation and hormones. And when I thought about it, I was like, that's too much of a biology lesson for the angels. They don't want to know about that. Science teacher trails. Anyway, so I did three clips. One of them was basically about the whole like how we conceived catching you guys up. The second was me crying and being upset basically because it was in the middle of vlogmas so i was having a meltdown oh, i was finding no. it really hard to like talk to you guys without telling you and like i just hate i hate having secrets like that like this big thing hanging over me especially when it comes to telling you guys about it i was really really struggling so that was another one and i was just basically being like a moany b-i-t-c-h <gasps> bitch can't, that's why I spelled it out because you can't say oh, it. Sorry. What, thanks a lot, Carl. I was just copying Chris off the circle. <laughs> the number three was talking to you guys a little bit about um, something that happened when I was about nine weeks pregnant and it was a very, very, very minor bleed. Everything is obviously all perfectly fine and I actually wasn't even that worried because we'd had a scan previous to the bleed that showed that the baby had a heartbeat yeah. and everything like that. So that was, the, they were all the clips and that was it. And it wasn't a very good vlog at all. Honestly, I know you guys are the sweetest people oh, in the world oh, it and the everybody, you know, everybody honestly, was saying, so Con, it wouldn't have been, you know, it. you're a liar, Con. You'd sit through 10 minutes and no, be like, this is so boring. No. Anyway, you lot always say, oh my God, no, please just upload it. Guys, honestly, I'm telling you, okay? I'm telling you, I'm sparing you an hour and a half of boredom. And instead, we're just going to do a nice long Q and A, &A have with a me involved. Up, Lucky and you. just chat. Because Con wasn't even really in the vlog. Because I was like, this is the first trimester vlog car. It's all about me. You're not the pregnant one. We're going straight into the Q and A. Luckily, you've asked a lot of good catch up questions, so this is just going to be a big long chat. Pretty much. It's so not just going to be a Q&A, it's going to be a bit of a story time, actually. I'm not sure how good I am at answering these questions, though. There There's only a certain amount of questions, questions I can ask. Answer. Like, so how many days post-ovulation were you when you took the pregnancy test? Connor's not going to be able to answer <gasps> No, I know that. Come on, then. When? He doesn't. Cause I, I do. No, let me figure this out. Do you not know? If you were... Well, then, how are you going to pretend that you knew Con? No, I, I wasn't going to pretend, though, but I was going to work it out. Come on, then. How many days post-ovulation did I test for pregnancy? Because you ovulate late. Do you ovulate at, like, 20, day 25? Yep. And then you took it a few days before your end of your cycle. Yeah. And your cycle was, like, 42 days? Ooh. 45. Mm, 44. So let's say... Let's take off a few days before the end. So let's call it 40. So... It would have been 15 days past your ovulation. Thank you. Um, if you haven't grabbed a drink or some snacks already, I know this Grab has been one. about a 20 minute Cheers. intro, um, but you're going to need some snacks because this is just going to be you and us having a chat. All right. So just make sure you're prepared and have, have nice snacks. I want to get the question that like stuck, kicks it all off. You know mm, what I mean? Okay. Someone called Lauren, lovely Lauren said, TTC journey, I didn't see it on Instagram. What's Trying to conceive, Con, I've told you about this so many times. I, I thought you knew all the lingo. I do, I do, I do. Right, gosh, where do we even start? So, our TTC journey, interesting. Just How before in we answer we this here? question, I do want to add, when I spoke about this on my Instagram story, which if you don't watch them, by the way, that's why you're really going to catch up with all the gossip. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure I you I said she couldn't see it on your Instagram, though. No, but she didn't see it. She didn't see it. She didn't watch the story that day. So she missed the info. Is it not on your pregnancy highlight? Well, it should be. Well, Laure Lauren. Lauren. If you look to the pregnancy highlight, you might see it. Anyway. I don't we'll tell you that again. anyway. Yeah, before we call it a trying to conceive journey, someone did actually mention to me in my DMs that... 
calling it a trying to conceive journey can come across as a little bit insensitive to the couples that have actually been TTC for a very long time, like years, because that is a real trying to conceive journey. journey. So what, when we say TTC and our trying to conceive journey, we were so lucky and it happened really, really quickly. And I just don't want any of you, any of you guys that have been trying for a baby for a while to be offended by us calling it that. But I don't really know what else to call it. I would say our conception. Yeah. I don't I, I don't, don't know. know. But I you don't know. know. What I mean. You know what, what you know mean? what I mean? I just don't I don't want to upset anybody. So if it does I'm really I'm really sorry. I just I honestly don't know what else to call it. I'd whoa, 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 whoa. I reckon we should oh, I reckon we should go further back than that. Well, I it, reckon maybe we just tell them when we actually decided we want to try. Should we ask when we're we going to try? I tell you what, then I'm going to start off with this. Sorry, Angel. I'm going to start off with this. This I get some tea and I've ruined it. Because you decide now is the right time to have a baby. Yes. That is really Start. The beginning, isn't it? Okay, Jerry. Jerry asked us that. Where do we How start? do we answer yeah. this question? Okay, right. We briefly spoke about this before we started to film because this is actually a really difficult question to answer. It's, it's one of those things where it, it, if you've had a child or you're thinking about having a child, it's one of those things where you just sort of know, but it's hard to Yeah, you understand describe. what we mean when we say you just know. And it's not yeah. like it's not like you wake up one day and you think, actually, do you know what? I'm ready for a baby. All of a sudden, you just find yourself. It just builds thinking, up to this point where it's like, okay, now yeah, it's time. For we're us. ready. Yeah, because let me tell you, like a year and a half ago, we weren't ready. Yeah, we just weren't, and I don't know what it was that clicked. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what it was that accumulated yeah. to us thinking, oh, now we're ready. I well, always knew that I wanted to be engaged before we had a baby and we had always said to each other that it would be lovely to have a baby of ours at yes. our wedding. So I guess we kind of hit the nail on the head in terms of timing, didn't we? Because we're getting married in 2022, yeah. baby's coming in 2021. The start of last year... 2020, yeah, yeah. the end of 19, we spoke about having a baby and we were like, we yeah. want to try to have a baby towards the end of 2020. 2020. Yeah. Um, I think a big thing holding me back was the whole situation going on with my mum. I mentally and emotionally could not have coped with looking after my mum and knowing what was going to happen there whilst also being pregnant or having a baby Trying before to, yeah. that situation came to an end. And I hope that doesn't come across as like... I don't know. I don't want that to be taken out of context at all, but I just knew that emotionally I wasn't ready for it. I needed the situation with my mum to finish yeah. before I was... And you had time to heal. Yeah, and I needed to it heal because it wasn't just losing my mum. It was the whole five or six years before that. I had so much that I needed to process and heal. But in the summer, it was a few months after my mum, we just sat down again, didn't we? I think we were actually drunk. We had some friends over and we'd had a bit to drink and we just had a really open, honest conversation. And in that conversation, we both just said to each other, look, like, I'm ready, are you yeah. ready? And it was kind of like, yeah, we let's both are, it. so let's just do it. But it wasn't like, do you know what? Let's come off the pill and let's just fully go ham for it. We just both said, let's just come with contraception and just not not try mm. and just see what happens so that's how i don't know it's such a hard one to answer because you don't just one day wake up and be like yeah i'm ready for a baby but at the same time it is just kind of like a natural progression and you will know when you're ready exactly you know when you're not ready and you know when you are yeah. ready because like you said two years ago we weren't ready no and all of a sudden you just kind of do get to a point where you think you know what i love this person so much it's time to have a child with you. I'd like to have half uh -oh. of me and half of you running about. And it's very important to also remember there's no like golden rule time scale. Like we've no. been together seven years. So you could be together two years and want a child. You could be together 10 or 15 years before you want a exactly. baby. Everybody is different. And that was another, another question that we had was lots of people are getting married or engaged or pregnant at the moment. Do you feel like having these milestones in your life right now is putting pressure on your viewers and i just want to say i really hope mm -hmm. our journey doesn't come across like that we are so lucky to first of all have each other connor and i found each other at a young age in today's day and age for relationships i was only i just turned 18 and connor just turned 21 um we're so lucky that our relationship has evolved and continued into our stage of life that we're at now I will never take for granted the house that we live in, the job mm. that we have, the fact that we're financially stable, like all of this, I know 
I know we're really, really lucky to be in this position. And I just want to say, as much as I feel like it's common sense not to compare your, your life and your where you are in life compared to anybody else's, you should never do that. Your life is perfect for where you are at the moment. I know it's easy to say that, but still kind of do it a little bit and be like, oh, well, she's 25 and she's engaged and she's got a house and they're having a baby and blah, blah, blah. But if you're 25 and you're just not ready for any of that, that's, that's totally, fine. completely fine. You and I are two totally different people at different stages in life. We've, we've gone through loads of different things. Mm -hmm. um, we're not the same person. And just because I'm ready for that, it doesn't, doesn't at all mean that you need to be ready for that, even within the next 10, 15 years of your life. You know? It's your life. At the end of the day, what's your famous quote? You do you, boo. Exactly. My Pilates teacher that I used to go to had a baby at about 48 years old. And that was perfect for her. That was perfect for her. Exactly. So never ever compare yourself. And I really, really hope that our journey and our relationship and our life together doesn't put you under any pressure because seriously, Angel Gout, you're doing great for where you That's are. It. Okay? We In the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, we just want to bring you some joy. That's it. Yeah. Isn't it? We just hope that you like watching. <laughs> yeah. You know? Don't, for God's sake, don't go right and go off your pill now if you're not ready for it, babes, just because I have, you know what I mean? But maybe come back and watch these videos in a few years when you are ready. Oh, okay. You know, that's yeah. my motherly advice. We'll be here for you in a couple of years. Like we'll always be here, and we'll go, that goes out for you as well, boyfriends in the back. So just don't worry. Just don't worry. Take life easy. You know what I mean? Right, bloody hell, now we need to actually get on to our trying to conceive mm. story, because... But Jerry asked that question about 10 minutes ago. Trying to conceive. We came off the pill in August. We came off the pill in August. Ellie was quite worried about coming off the pill because you were on the pill for 10, 10 years. years. Well, I'd been on contraception for 10 years. Exactly. And I have an underactive thyroid that I am on medication for. Since I've mentioned that I'm pregnant and I have an underactive thyroid, I've had a lot of questions about like other people with underactive thyroids mm -hmm. worried that it affects fertility. Um, as far as I'm aware, and obviously I am not a doctor, so this is just my personal story with it. If you have been controlling your underactive thyroid with medication for a, for a long time and your body is regulated with the thyroxine and everything is all perfectly fine, it shouldn't affect your fertility or your pregnancy whatsoever. You, you just do need to stay on, on top of it. And I've been on medication for my thyroid for about three, year, three and a half years now, I think. Probably that, yeah. Um, either way, I was just worried because it is something that you think about. As well as being on contraception for like mm. 10 years, you do just sit there as a girl and think, Could this, how fertile yeah. am I actually going to be? Because I feel like every girl just worries about that. Do boys worry about that at all, if you're going to be fertile or not? I feel like it's more of a female thing. I never really worried about it. Yeah. You just... <laughs> on average, this is a little stat that I... Uh... Picked up, along, picked the up along the way. way. It takes five to six months. Is that correct? If fifty. I think it's fifty percent of couples fall pregnant within the first six months, mm -hmm. and the other like forty-five percent or something fall pregnant within a year. Um, you just never know if you're going to be in that first fifty yeah. percent, or if it's going to take you even longer than a year. You just don't know. We did just come off the pill to let my body do its thing. At the same time, I was really, really interested, with my underactive thyroid specifically, to see how my body was working. I just found it really, really interesting because when you think, right, do you know what, I'm gonna start trying for a baby now, I feel like I had a whole new appreciation and viewpoint towards my body and how it worked. All of a sudden, literally overnight, I didn't care less about how I looked. All I wanted to know was what was going on inside of me and that everything was working as it should be. I had never specifically taken my health for granted, but it was the first time in my life that I was like really interested in my health and health I really was the number one. valued yeah. that. So, having said that, I spoke to my mum friends, okay? I spoke to my sisters who knew I'd come off the pill. Like I talked to my sisters about everything. They knew that we were looking at starting trying for a baby. I spoke to my friend that had, had babies and everybody recommended this same one thing about seeing how your body was doing and that was the clear blue fertility monitor. Let them see it close up. This is a bit of magic, okay? Everybody, this is gold dust if you're trying to conceive. This is like a little computer, <gasps> okay? And it becomes your best mate. It's a little gadget. Let me tell you. And turn it on. I've not actually, oh, oh no, I think we might be out of back. Oh my Lord. Okay, well, let's turn her off. This is basically a tracker for your cycle. Every single day throughout your cycle, you have to 
wee on an ovulation stick and it will tell you what your hormones are doing. Now, I'm not going to go into a full biology lesson here. If you're trying for a baby, you will know there are two hormones that you want to look for when you're trying for a baby. I can't remember what they're called, but one of them is slow and steady and it kind of like initiates ovulation and the other hormone is like a spike and that is when you've actually ovulated. So that that is what you're looking out for throughout your cycle. That's what that monitor looks for. I will leave a link for it in the description box below because it is seriously... Like, I, I fully it, believe that's how we felt pregnant. It literally tells you when you're ovulating, which is when you're going to get pregnant. Yeah. You have like a two day window yeah. of when you could conceive. And also I think it's so much better than just like normal ovulation sticks because you've got the whole month there to look at. So you know exactly what day of your cycle you're on. You can compare it to past months of your cycle. So typically a woman ovulates on like day 14 of her cycle it got to like day 22 or 23 of my cycle and i still hadn't even had that first like slow steady hormone that initiates ovulation come up on that so i was a bit worried but then literally the next day i literally had a conversation with my friend about it i was like oh my god i'm really worried that i'm not even going to be able to ovulate and blah 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 she gave me a good talking to that was like look there's no reason why you wouldn't like mm. have faith that it's going to happen and it will the next day I started ovulation, which I just think is crazy. The power of the mind is just crazy. Mm. During my first cycle off of the pill, I didn't actually ovulate. I just had that slow, steady one, which was obviously just my body like gearing up for ovulation, but I didn't actually ovulate. That was a little bit worrying. And I, I found myself thinking in my head like, oh, maybe I did ovulate, but it didn't pick my ovulation up or whatever, like stupid monitor. I feel like I have, I feel like I have blame. ovulated and then what made it worse was also on that same first cycle off of the pill I wasn't used to my natural cycles I didn't realize that I was gonna have like 44 45 day long cycles so when it got to like day 28 of my cycle which is an average of when a woman comes on her period I was thinking I've got to be pregnant <laughs> for like oh, two yeah. weeks after that I was literally taking pregnancy tests like three a day I was taking three tests a day literally and um it God, my heart really, really goes out there, honestly, to anybody that's trying to conceive because you just feel so much pressure and you just so badly want it to work. And I really found myself, even in that first cycle off of the pill, when I'd promised myself that I was just going to do that monitor to see how my body was working, I really found myself like trying to make excuses for the fact that I was pregnant, but like these tests just weren't showing mm. it. And I don't know it's it's such a horrible hard situation to be in and everybody says you need to relax and it's but the hardest thing to do anyway so first cycle was a bit of a heartbreaking one to be honest because even though I'd said to myself that I was just going to see how my body was doing in the back of my head I was thinking imagine if I felt pregnant that quickly it would just be incredible second cycle I did ovulate baby swift was conceived all because of this little device honestly i'd really really recommend it it is more expensive than like your normal ovulation sticks and stuff but i think if you're serious about trying for a baby and wanting to see what's going on with your body it's worth it it's so worth it next question please dial in i'm ready for it did you take folic acid when trying to conceive or when did you start if you did so that's another thing actually as well as the fertility monitor um i got Oh, you Connor got me and some. I, you got me some vitamins didn't you both hooked <laughs> on the multi vets we were both on a brand called Proceive, I think it is. Again, I'll leave it in the description box below. There's some for men and there's some for women. And I started taking that as soon as I came off the pill, basically. Every morning, Els would shout up. Have you had your vitamin? Have you had your vitamin, Con? I was like, yes. Alice. And if you missed a day, I'd be like, don't you care? <laughs> <laughs> How many days post ovulation did you test positive? This is the famous question. Oh, this is not even working, is it? Oh, Ellie. Okay, let's talk about the, the charger. Whole... I just. Ex I just. I know Con, you worked out. You worked out, mate. 15 days. Let's talk about the pregnancy test. Because of the horror of the first cycle, where I had somehow convinced myself that I must be pregnant, but all these tests told me I wasn't, I was actually really scared of doing another pregnancy test in the second cycle. I didn't want to get myself so wound up again because what was getting me wound up was the negative pregnancy test mm. when I was convinced I was pregnant. So I wanted to hold off for as long as I could um, to do a test. To ensure if it was... If it was pregnant. It would come up. I wanted it to literally be like a big bold line. I didn't want to have to be looking at it in different lights mm. and thinking, right, is that pregnant, is it not? Because in that first cycle, I haven't mentioned, I had a false positive. 
So that's what that's why I was really like, oh my god, I must be pregnant because I showed you, didn't I? <laughs> I was not so sad. Sound we we right, were yeah. both so excited, weren't we? Yeah. We were like, oh my god, it's pregnant. But it wasn't. It was a Tesco's pregnancy test and it was a false positive and it was it was just heartbreaking. So I didn't want that again, second cycle. So I I remember the fertility monitor coming up and telling me, You can test for pregnancy from today. And I thought, no, I'm not doing it, I'm not gonna give in because if I'm pregnant, I just really want it to be so obvious. Yeah. I don't want to be guessing. You don't want it to be a no, but then in a day's time, it could be a yeah. Exactly. I just didn't want to put myself through that. I really didn't. So um, it got to about a day before my period was due. And in the night, I went to I went to bed, but I literally did not sleep a wink the entire night. The whole night, I could not stop thinking about the fact that I could be pregnant. And was I pregnant or was I not? If I was pregnant, how was I going to tell Connor? how was I going to tell my family and my friends and what was the baby going to be like and I just had all of these thoughts running through my head as well as some really bad cramps <sighs> and throughout the night my tummy got really bloated as well like abnormally bloated and I remember thinking to myself at like 5am when I hadn't slept all night okay these cramps and this bloating is either going to be a period that's going to come on tomorrow or I'm pregnant because obviously I've been up googling like four or five weeks pregnant cramping yeah. like really early pregnancy signs and everybody had said it's so similar to like pre-period signs so you could be pregnant and I just remember thinking I, I have to do a test now because I've just got to put myself out of my misery and I knew at that point if I was pregnant it would show if I wasn't pregnant then it, I definitely wasn't mm -hmm. pregnant because it's no, not it like period, it, yeah um... so did a test We've you guys seen have seen that, yeah. it came up as positive <clears throat> and I was so, I was so shook. But I want to say, I don't, I can't remember exactly how many days post ovulation it was. Connor might be right, it might be about 15. But I waited until the very last second that I could have done a test to the point where mentally it was like, I've actually got to put myself out of my misery now because I'm winding myself up, making myself think yeah. I'm pregnant. With this test yeah. thing, the clear blue, Yeah. does that say on, does it come up saying you could test for pregnancy a certain amount of days after your yeah uh, okay yeah so it's very so handy it's, good, yeah. it's very good someone else said did you have any signs or symptoms that made you do a test just like i said it was just literally the bloating and the cramping that one night i thought it could have been a period so i thought i'm just gonna do it yeah um you were planning on doing a test one day that week anyway yeah i guess that just pushed you to do it then i don't think i did have any other symptoms did i the only other no. thing I can remember is when I would have been, like, literally days after conceiving, we had an angel collection photo shoot, and oh, yeah. we were driving up there, and I felt, I was so oh, yeah. sick. I was so sick. You were actually sick? Yeah. No, that was another one. Do you remember when we were driving in the car, and you were driving, I was like, I pulled over by the side of the road, and I got oh, down on neutrals. my knees. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was actually like, oh, yeah. I feel so sick. And then she, Eddie blamed it on my driving. Yeah. It was you, Other Eddie. than that, that's that was the baby only... Swift in there. That was the only thing I can think of. Which I know is really annoying because when you're in that stage between, like, your ovulation and your period, all you want is for someone to be like, look, yeah, yeah. this is what, you, this is what is going to happen if you're pregnant, okay? All you want is those symptoms, but I'm, I didn't have any, apart from that bloating and cramping in my mind. We just thought it was me. Yeah. Someone said, are you going to find out the gender of the baby? So, well. again, if you guys don't follow over on Instagram, you won't know. We actually already know the gender of the baby. We did a blood test. Well, I did a blood test when I was about... I can't remember if it's eight weeks or ten weeks pregnant. It's ten weeks. Okay. So you can do a test from ten weeks pregnant that basically looks for male chromosomes in your blood. Um, so it means that no boys can be around you when you take it. Obviously, because you're a female, you, won't you have shouldn't any, have yeah. male chromosomes in your body. So they do a blood test. Um, like I said, boys can't be around, so I actually had to disinfect the entire kitchen. Connor and but even her being even the boys came with me and had to room. go outside because like male pets aren't even allowed to be around. So I had to disinfect the entire kitchen. I had to do this blood test. And then it gets sent off to a lab in America. They look at your blood. They see if you've got male chromosomes. Because you're a girl and you shouldn't have male chromosomes in your body. If you do, it means you're having a little boy. And if you don't have any, like you should normally, it's then a girl. it means you're a girl. So yeah, we did that because we're so impatient. And 
I really wanted to already start planning like the nursery and <laughs> yeah. like buying clothes and stuff like that. So we did that. So we already know. But we are going to be waiting to announce it to you guys until we have had the official 16 to 20 week gender scan, which is at the end of the month. So you guys will be finding out very soon if we're having a boy or a girl. I'd love to know what you guys think. Comment below. Is Baby Swift a boy? Or is Baby Swift oh, a girl? I don't know. What do you think? So did you do much exercise in the first trimester? Do you know what, guys? I did absolutely none. Sometimes I didn't even go on the dog walk of the day. Mm -hmm. And you would use that little card, wouldn't you? You'd play that little card. Oh, I'm pregnant. Sorry, I can't do any <laughs> dog walks today. I'm like, really? I tell you what. I'll go out in the rain by myself. My number one symptom of pregnancy in my first trimester, and I didn't have many, and that's why I think the first trimester vlog ended up being so poor, was because I didn't have any symptoms. Um, the one I did have was fatigue, and I'm quite a tired person anyway because of my thyroid. But you were ready to uh, come out to bed at three pm. Yeah, you? You I was tired. exhausted, and I would sleep for like twelve plus hours in the night. And the other symptom I had was l complete lack of appetite, pretty much. I would, just didn't really want to would eat. Would you say these symptoms have gone now? You're in second trimester. Um, I think they've lessened definitely. Like, I don't have to go to bed at 8 p.m. every single early, yeah. night now. I can push myself till 10 at a max. Ooh. I am still tired, though, and my lack of appetite has gone throughout the day, but in the evening sometimes, like post 6 p.m., I find it quite hard to eat still. Mm. I, ca I have to have my dinner at like you 5 o'clock. You have to have an early dinner. Yeah, otherwise I'm just, I just, I don't want anything, and I just, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Strange, isn't it, really? You yeah. think having another child in you... Another child having a baby in you, <laughs> you'd be uh, wanting more food. But I know. I well, know. I do tell myself that through the day. Yeah, you do make up for it, don't you? Anyway, I didn't do much exercise in the first trimester at all. But now Although, I'm in my second, I really want to get back into it because there's lots of evidence that suggests that if you're active and you exercise a lot through your pregnancy, obviously in a safe way, then it can really help with the birth and recovery after birth. Honey, I've got a wedding I need to bounce back That's for, it. you know. Um, of course, it's not about that. I just want to be like as healthy as I can for my pregnancy and for my baby. But I have signed up with a personal trainer three times a week on Zoom throughout this lockdown. I'm going to continue it for as long as I feel comfortable doing. Um, just some minutes, really just basic, easy pregnancy movements. Bit of pelvic floor. Yeah. Had my second one this morning and I absolutely love it. I absolutely yes. love my PT. She's such you. a... Dream. And he's actually doing more exercise than me nowadays. Yeah, I am. Because obviously gyms are shut. I'm not going to the gym. And Eddie's out here. Show me how it's done. <laughs> and your preggers. <laughs> Someone said, tell us more about the bleed you had. I think it could be very relatable as that's a fear. I completely agree. Um, okay, where do I start with this bleed? So I was about nine, nine, weeks. nine weeks pregnant. And we would had a lovely... i tell you when it was actually. It was my birthday. It was my birthday. I was had it? Yeah, it was. Because oh, we'd been yeah, out for lunch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'd been oh, out for lunch. And I remember thinking, darling. I saw the blood on the toilet paper. And I remember thinking, if this go. is happening on my birthday, life is so cruel. But, obviously, thank you, Lord. Thank you, universe. Um... We had a really safe first trimester and baby was completely fine. All that happened was, literally, we'd been out for lunch. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. I went to the toilet when we got home. And um, when I wiped, I saw a tight, like, literally a minuscule bit of blood on the paper. And hospitals and everybody say, like, oh, unless you have, like, severe cramping and it's, like, a, a huge amount of blood and stuff like that, don't worry. But as a pregnant woman in your first trimester, especially for your first pregnancy when you're not used to anything like that, blood is the last yeah. thing you want to see down there. Like, every, it's just warnings just go off in your head and you just get so scared. So we went for an emergency scan the next day. I hadn't had any more bleeding. I'd had no pain. I'd had no cramping, so I wasn't worried. Also, we had had an early scan, which, where we had seen the baby's heartbeat. And apparently if you like have an early scan at like seven weeks like we did and you see the baby has a heartbeat, the chances of miscarriage really drop down to like 4% or something. So I wasn't worried all that much. Guys, would you believe our battery literally just died because that's how long we've been talking for. OMG. And this, that's a fully charged battery. Sorry if this video is literally so long and boring. I hope you guys are enjoying it. But yeah, I wasn't all that worried at all, but because I'd seen the blood, alarm bells were going. I called up my 
local hospitals antenatal unit I think it's called like the early pregnancy phone number if some if like you see blood or if you have pain or anything like that and they got me in for an emergency scan the morning after the midwife was literally so nice and she was like your baby is absolutely fine like really don't worry about it walked away with a cute little scan picture yeah. and I thank my lucky stars every day that that is all I walked mm -hmm. away with with just a cute little picture of our baby, baby and everything was all fine. Chloe asked, how much did you have to pay for your early scan? Congrats. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you, Chloe. Um, we paid, I think it was around £80 for our early scan. And honestly, yeah. I know it's not accessible to everybody, but if you can afford it, I would 100%. literally... If it's like, not that this is going to happen, but if it's the only scan you ever have throughout your entire pregnancy, I would so recommend it. It is like it's such a weird mental space to be in between taking the pregnancy test and being 12 weeks because that's just so long to wait if you found out when i found out which was at like five five-ish weeks i found out i was pregnant mm. um, and because the only evidence you have is like this positive pregnancy test you and your partner like we, yeah. we just used to sit there didn't we and be like yeah so am i actually pregnant or what because you get yourself all excited and if you don't have many symptoms like i didn't it's just a bit yeah. a weird place, I'm isn't actually it? pregnant, but the scan is 100% worth it. Like I said, um, if you see a heartbeat on that early scan, um, then like your chances of miscarriage or anything going wrong really, really, really decreases. decreases. That's the main thing about the 12-week scan is they look for the heartbeat, don't they? Yeah. Which enables them to say that your pregnancy will be... And usually by 12 weeks, that is, that is why the 12-week scan is, is at... 12 weeks with the NHS because by 12 weeks if something was going to go wrong it probably would have by 12 weeks um or they can tell you about the 12 mm. week scan but if if it's accessible to you to go and get an early scan kind of whenever you can I think I think you can do them from seven weeks because the baby's just too small to see before mm. then um it's just the most magical feeling it yeah it just really really makes it I will remember that night real, for the rest of yeah. our life like seeing our first baby on our on that it's pretty scan, special and it's worth the money hands down knowing you've done that together mm. and even me like she checked me out um the sonographer lady she just checked all of my ovaries and it's not only the the baby or the fetus that you, you need to look at it's like if if your womb and everything is all okay and if it's in the place it should be and obviously at that scan as well you can tell if it's one or two yeah. or three um it's just seriously so worth it and there are lots of places that do it there's a company called window to the womb that isn't who we went with but i know a lot of people that have gone to window to the womb and they have like multiple places all up and down the uk that is quite a good brand apparently so just google it um early scans in your local area and there'll be loads that come up but yeah i'd highly recommend it just the most magical feeling ever wasn't it yeah it honestly was even Con got really emotional, didn't you? I was, don't tell you. You did? That. Come on, dude. It's an emotional You're a dad time. Now. Of course it's an it is. Time. It was just so cute. And what was more special about it as well is the lady. I didn't even realise that this is what they did, but like when they first put the little machine on your tummy to look for the baby, they're asking you questions so that when they're looking at the screen, looking for the heartbeat to check everything is all okay, you're distracted and you're talking and you're mm. answering their questions. And she literally like stopped me mid sentence answering something that she had asked me, and she just went, "Okay, dim the lights to her assistant." And she went, "Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. There's someone here that I'd like to introduce you to." And she turned around on the computer, and it and was on the screen, just, yeah. it was so emotional. It actually makes me <laughs> cry even thinking about it now. It was just lovely. Somebody said, "Did you share with your family and friends that you were trying?" I'm not sure it would add pressure. Um, only my sisters, because I literally tell them everything, mm. and obviously, like, they have been pregnant and had babies before and stuff, so I wanted their advice and to talk to them about it. And also, Lucy has been waiting for us to have a baby, basically, since the day we got together. So, she was, I knew she'd be really she'd excited, be, yeah. she'd she wanted to be to yeah. on the inside goss. Other than that, and... You didn't tell my parents, did we? No, I, I really what didn't want many them? people to know at all, because like you said, it is that added pressure mm. um that's why we didn't say anything online about like coming off of our contraception or anything like that because it's such a big thing mentally to know that you are really trying for a baby but you don't know like how it's going to go let alone hundreds of thousands of people on the internet like messaging you every day mm. asking how it's going I, I just couldn't mentally cope 
with that pressure so that's why we chose not to tell anybody i know that a few people when they start trying for a baby are really open about it online but it just didn't feel right for me literally like like we said the only person that we retold really, really was my sisters and i think i told a couple literally a couple of like my closest closest friends um other than that i think that was it mm. there is a lot of pressure on yourself when yeah. you are trying for a baby so i would say until it happens and it tr trust me it is the most magical thing ever when it does happen i would recommend like telling as little people as possible i think it's different if it's a girl and they have also been through a trying to conceive journey or they've been pregnant or had babies because it's someone to talk to and relate to but if it's somebody that maybe hasn't or like parents and stuff like yeah. that we just didn't feel like it was right to tell them that we were trying somebody said can you tell us more about the dreams you mentioned with your mum and the baby? I didn't know you guys would want to know about this because I feel like such a... Oh, I don't really know what the word is. I feel oh. like... Just feel a bit silly sometimes when I talk about mm, it. Yeah, well, it's a lovely little story. I know. Well, I think it's a lovely little story, but I'm aware of like how it can sound to other people. So it's really lovely to me that you guys are interested in this. But I think it might have been when I literally just came off the pill. Um, I was led here in bed, I was doing some meditation and it was so weird, it was like the second I shut my eyes, um, my mum literally came, just came through to me literally as though she was like where Connor is from me now, like I could see every detail of her face, I could see every wrinkle, the sparkle in her eyes, like it was just phenomenal considering obviously i think about my mum every single day of my entire life and i miss her so much and i love her so much that is kind of only as far as it ever goes you just think about them but when you actually can see them like fully like you're face to face again it's the most amazing feeling and i remember thinking oh why are you here and she just looked really beautiful and she looked really young and really happy and she was in this gorgeous meadow and she was dancing to abba and she had her back to me and then she kind of like turned around and she had this child on her hip and they were dancing to ABBA and they were singing and they were laughing as though they had some sort of like inside joke that I wasn't allowed to know about which is so her yeah and I was like what are you I asked I said to her what are you doing and this is just all in my mind but I feel like it was really like a visitation from her um she said she went to me shh 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 I'm just making the most of my last five minutes of being a grandma before they come down to you. And I remember thinking, oh my God, mm. what? I just remember thinking that was, I don't know. When you try for a baby, obviously as we said throughout this whole video, you do have that like 50% of you that is really logical and you know the statistics and you know how difficult some people find it and you don't want to set yourself up for, for false hope. But the other 50% of me, personally, I did just kind of know that it was going to happen soon. I just felt like, I just felt in my gut like it was our right timing to have a baby. And Manifest. They were, like, they were ready for us to be their parents and it was just perfect timing. And um, until I fell pregnant, I think that's why I was so emotional when I found, the moment I found out I was pregnant because... I was telling myself this narrative of like, it's going to happen soon. Like you, you're meant to be a mum and a dad now. Like this is your season of just happiness and like your, your struggle in life is over because that's another thing that I had heard my mum say to me, like in another, I had, a, I had a few dreams about her and in another one, she was like, you just need to stop worrying because this is your like time of happiness, mm -hmm. your struggle, your time of struggling in life your whole 25 years of life you've always had pain of some sort and now it's just happiness so just look forward to it and it's going to come really soon and don't worry and I had another one where when I bought the fertility monitor I literally I opened the box and I heard her in my head laughing saying you're not going to need that don't know why you bother getting that because it's going to happen so quickly so I had a couple of things from her but until I saw that positive pregnancy test there was always of course that part mm -hmm. of me that was like you could just be making this up in your head. You just miss your mum so much and you just want this to happen so badly. So when I did see that pregnancy test and it said, yes, you are pregnant. It was just like another... It was like getting a gold star for being intuitive. Do you know what I mean? 
Just like, like a little you, well done you did it though, like yeah. you 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 were on the right path this whole time and um it was the same when i thought that connor was going to propose like obviously i didn't know of course i didn't know i had literally no no inkling i just had a gut feeling three days before that it was going to happen psyche, and that's what the clip was in that engagement video and i know that some people are like oh my god she obviously knew mm. i honestly i didn't it's just I like to think that I'm really intuitive with things like that and I just like to follow my gut and that little dream from my mum and baby swift um <laughs> is something that I will always you know I'm gonna tell the baby all about that of course like, the baby swift was baby swift a boy and a girl or a girl in the dream I'm not telling you you're not telling me no well I'm not, not on camera anyway <sighs> did it have a gender like you knew of um I had a feeling, but it didn't, it wasn't obviously Obvious, a boy yeah, or a girl, but I had a feeling. Yeah. And I did have another one as well, where I don't actually know if this was a dream. I remember being asleep, but like waking up slightly. And the whole room looked exactly as it did. But in that corner of the room, it's like, it's so weird. It's like, there wasn't a wall or a window there. And there was just like this beam of light going mm. from our bedroom to my mum. And on the other end of the beam of light, she was packing up this child's suitcase and like gave them a little push to come down to us it was crazy it was crazy and that that must have been just before mm -hmm. when we were conceiving really so i don't know it's just funny isn't it it's, it's mad fun. it's, it's, it's mad i don't know it could all be in my head i don't know but you know as i've said since my mum passed that is all that is all i'm gonna ever have from her now for the rest of my life so i'd like to believe that it's real and that it's her mm -hmm. and you can think i'm silly and whatever but um it's just what you i personally i exactly. choose to believe it and i feel like if it makes me happy to believe it that's, then what that's what matters okay we're nearly coming to the end of the q a <sighs> guys there are just a couple more questions this girl says i'm 15 weeks pregnant i've been massively craving oranges as well i spoke a bit on my story about how I really like orange stuff, like orange squash, Fanta oranges. How have you found the hormones? So you're 14 weeks now. Yeah, I'm 14 and a half weeks now. And do you know what, with the hormones, I don't know if you've noticed them. Have you noticed hormone differences in me? In what sense? Like my moods. Not really, to be do honest. Do you know what, in the last two you weeks. You snap now and again. Since. But it's not to the point where. It's think too much, bloody yeah, hell. those hormones. Since I've come into my second trimester, I have noticed mood swings in, and I have to, I have to like actively calm myself down. I have to stand there. And a lot of it actually is to do with social media. It'll be like silly DMs that I get from people that are just like really insensitive or like not th thought mm. through before they message me. And um, it, it's so silly because I know that it's stuff that wouldn't have affected me before I was pregnant. But now I am pregnant. It's all I don't up. know if it's because I already feel so protective over this child. And I love it so much. But I just... Something just really infuriate me now. And <laughs> they I know they wouldn't have before. And I need to just, like... I actually have been turning my phone off and leaving it up here. Hey? Yeah. Have you? I've been turning my phone off and leaving it up here. And just having ten minutes to play with the dogs or like go downstairs and eat something or just be present and then you know with an hour i can finally see the oh it was just a silly, silly message like don't worry about it just doesn't matter <laughs> but in that moment i'm like ready to I kick punch off a wall. i honestly i get so crazy so, so but you haven't noticed Not it really i feel like i have been practicing a lot of self-control with my mood swings oh, really? it's only been the last honestly since i've like come into my second trimester okay i've got two questions here that I'm going to answer. Someone said, how quickly did you notice your bump or a change in your body? And someone said, is pregnancy as magical as everyone says? So first of all, with the bump, it's been a bit of a weird one with my bump because I feel like I've actually got a really big bump for 14 weeks pregnant. I feel like since, I I've, know, really. since we've announced, my bump has been like quite big and I absolutely love it. Like, no one can tell me anything. I love my big bump and I only want my bump to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Ever since I was little and I ever used to think about being pregnant, I always used to think, oh, I'm so desperate for like a massive baby bump. Like I want to be obviously pregnant. I want to be waddling around and I want to be rolling out of bed and I want Connor to be pushing me up oh, off the sofa. And you I just, are that's just like my dream down the stairs. of pregnancy. I just love it. So the fact that I've already got like quite a big bump makes me really happy. But having said that, 
that night before I did the pregnancy test and I said I felt bloated, yeah, that bloat hasn't left. Forever it's not bloated. left. I will be bloated now, I feel like, until the end of my pregnancy. Um, but when I went to get weighed at my most recent scan, um, I have put on weight, which is actually really, like, really assuring for me because I feel bigger, but I don't know if that's just me, like, winding Mentally, myself yeah. up and just thinking, oh, yeah, like, I look so much bigger this week. When you're actually told by a midwife that you put on weight and you're pregnant, you feel a bit, like... A bit proud. That baby's getting baby, big, honey. You know? I wanna, uh, why I want to answer the is pregnancy as magical as everyone says question with this question is because this is something I wanted to know, right, before I got pregnant. I used to look at pregnant people and I used to be like, how does it actually feel knowing that you have another body inside of you right now? How does it feel like? Like you're pregnant, like you actually got a child in your body and... you got two heartbeats. There are two of you inside your body, like what? And I remember thinking that when you're actually pregnant, this is this is how I can best describe it, at least at the moment, okay? 14 weeks pregnant. I feel like I have just put on loads of weight. You've been inflated. To like an uncomfortable point and I'm breathless and I'm really unfit. It just feels like I haven't been looking after myself as much when obviously I've been looking after myself even more mm. but like it it's so crazy seeing your body and feeling your body change so drastically you not just sit there watching tv think oh my god okay yes you, well, you of all people know I do you know well, I do then. but in the everyday walking up the stairs going out for a walk that was I don't it feels magical say it to the it camera. feels magical but at the same time it just feels a bit like but you're it's at, very you're, normal at you're at that time. in between stage yeah. where it's not so obvious you're pregnant yeah, exactly. and you're not getting loads of like kicks you're not yeah. massive where it's like oh yeah. wow I'm actually growing a baby yeah. inside of me it just it just feels nor quite normal at the moment yeah like you know? you're bloated but a little extra yeah. than normal yeah pretty much and just way more unfit than normal and weird things like don't want to eat after six when just give me pregnancy la would have been like i need to inhale a whole pack consuming of the bulk of her calories <laughs> post 6 p.m hope everybody that this was a fun informative chatty relaxed video to watch honestly it feels like a weight has been lifted off my shoulder now that we've mm. done this video because it's like a full-on catch up, up with everybody ready to go into some real time pregnancy vlogs honey you ready for that i think so i just feel like can't wait maybe i should do a dad vlog mate oh my god Carl, maybe you should all the boyfriends in the back <gasps> that's such a good idea con thursday takeover me sat there playing cod the dad vlog playing warzone with the boys well i'm not sure about that <laughs> Maybe like buying some cute oh, flowers, oh yeah, or like baby clothes for your baby mama. So it's all about you still. <laughs> anyway, guys, I know this video has been such a long one, but I really, really hope that it was just a fun little catch up with us. I hope you have enjoyed um, this video on Hump Day for Miss Hump over it. Yeah, don't call me Miss Hump. Miss Hump. No, don't. Hello, Miss, Miss Hump. Hump. Don't call me Miss Hump ever again. <laughs> Love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. And like I said, I'm so excited for like the real time pregnancy videos now. It's going to be so fun to actually do like pregnancy vlogs. Because can you believe it? We've not done a pregnancy vlog yet. Not done a pregnancy vlog. Print den wow. live. You'll be having one soon, Angel. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you so so much for watching, everybody. I can't wait to go through the rest of this incredible journey with you all. And I love you so much. And we will see you in the next one. Bye. Love ya.